Sir, welcome to Johnny Joggers. We have every collection from UK to French Polynesia. What can we do for you? Sir, my daughter's wedding, sir. So, it looks like a suit. It must look like a suit, sir. Sure. Ramu. Sir, according to our calculations, this UK suit will be perfectly fit. UK? Sir, let's pack it and send it to the house, please. Of course, sir. Thank you, sir. Let's go, I'll meet you, sir. Sir, is this suit in the UK? Yes, brother. Uttarakhand. So, a couple of years back, a local retailer in New Delhi launched a brand by the name of Munich Polo and positioned itself as a German brand. It even went on to discuss the rich cultural history of Munich on its website and also created web pages in German. Now, why did a New Delhi brand take the effort of presenting itself like a German company in a market like India. Here's why. The British might be gone and consumers might still harbour anger for them, but we still unconsciously look at anyone foreign as being premium. Having a foreign name gives a global identity to these brands. It just creates an impression that their products are not exclusively meant for India and it seems more exotic than anything. More importantly, a foreign name creates the notion that the product is imported and thus plays a big role in justifying a sky-high price for the product. The reason for this is status. Once a product is positioned as a status product, people want to buy it to show off to their friends. In fact, I've had many friends in college who've come to me and said, look at this wash, look at this belt, look at this shirt. It's from this brand, that brand. And I never knew the brand. And because I didn't know the brand and it had a foreign sounding name, I was like, oh, must be a rich kid. Indians tend to believe that benchmarks are made abroad and that Indian brands can no way match up to the standards of foreign entities. Quality-wise, these products are still made in India, but the buyer does not know this. This prejudice we have, apart from buying foreign brands, is also reflected in several things. Like, we choose to go abroad for higher studies, we choose to watch Western cinema over regional ones, and we choose books authored by foreigners over Indian authors. The manufacturers and retailers capitalize on this psyche of Indians. Now, this is the mindset of people. You can't change this mindset, right? You have to put in effort to change this mindset. Decades of effort, lots of change, lots of media, lots of content. Therefore, you have two choices. Take the effort, change the mindset, like we are doing, or capitalize on the mindset. Say, I will build a business. This is how things are. I will build a business, I will monetize it. One of the companies that did this, and there's no love or hate for them from my side for doing this, is the Altya Birla Group. Altya Birla acquired a subsidiary called Madura Fashion in 1999. Madura Fashion, in 2021, did 1559 crores of revenue, and it has a few companies in it that you know very well. For example, Van Heusen. It gives the vibe of a very powerful brand. The Philip Van Heusen Corporation was founded in 1881 in USA. In 2013, all rights of this brand were sold to Madura Fashion. Then, let's come to Peter England. It gives the professional vibe, right? Like you're going to work, you need some clothes. Peter England established its first factory in 1889 in Ireland. Madura Fashion and Lifestyle gained the world rights for the brand in 2000 in India. Third one, Alan Soli. Professional and also colourful clothing. This brand was established in Nottingham, England in 1744. Madura bought it from a company called William Hollins. Remember this name, as we'll come back to this later. There's a very important point that every other YouTuber misses in their videos about William Hollins. Over the years, the same Madura Fashion and Lifestyle owns all rights to sell the products in India, which is a division of Altya Birla Group. Now you might say, well, all of these are foreign brands. They were registered outside of India, which makes them foreign. Well, it really depends on what you mean by foreign. Most people on YouTube won't do this level of research. When I did the research, I manually sat and did the research on Hollands & Co. because it seems strange. It rebranded to Viela after a merger and then became Coats. Finally, it sold off its Viela fashion retail business to entrepreneur Richard Thompson in 2003 for one pound, which is 90 rupees. They basically died and their brand was just bought by Aditya Birla for almost no price and the ability to say, this is a foreign brand with a long legacy. They're not lying. It is a foreign brand with a long legacy, but they bought it for nearly zero. It's like 
I could register a company in the US tomorrow and say this is a foreign brand or I could buy a shell company in the US for like $1 something that's dying and say this is a foreign brand with a 100 year old legacy made in India team is in India everything is in India but as you know the Indian mindset if you see that TV advertisement a decade ago you'll see that they still try to give it an American spin and their lead character in that ad is an Indian but looks as foreign as can be. The question you might ask is, why buy so many brands? Why not one? This technique is not unique to Aditya Birla. I'll give you another example from China called BBK Electronics. What phone do you use? Vivo? Oppo? Realme? It really doesn't matter because everyone is using the same damn phone. All of these brands are owned by the Chinese company BBK Electronics and in Q1 2020, the combined market share of these four mobile phone manufacturers is 44%. On a global scale, BBK has managed to seize 19% of the market which is 1% less than Samsung. Here are the three reasons that Aditya Birla and BBK have so many similar brands in the same space under them. The idea is positioning. Realme, for example, is targeting younger audience, whereas OnePlus caters to premium audience. Vivo and Oppo operate in the lower cost segment, which is 10,000 to 25,000 rupees. So in marketing senses, by having a variety of brands, BBK was able to use a variety of marketing techniques without diluting the positioning of a particular brand. Yeah, OnePlus kitna acha hai. Yeah, Vivo kitna acha hai. Yeah, Profit kitna acha hai. Think about it. A rich guy goes and buys uh, the Apple iPhone and then realizes a variant of the phone is available for 10,000 rupees. How is he going to feel? Remember, this is about status, right? This is about looking at another person and showing off to another person. How is he going to feel? Bad. Which is why OnePlus cannot sell cheap phones. Which is why Apple refuses to sell cheap phones even though they very easily can. Having different brackets allows them to play their different, different kinds of marketing. For the premium segments, you can do invite only, you can get uh, some amazing, uh, you know, very, very special creators. For the mid segment, you can get rappers like Divine. For the lowest segment, you can get Salman Khan. You can go all over the place. In fact, Vivo and Oppo concentrated on offline sales by enlisting aggressive distribution of electronic shops. OnePlus is very hard to buy from an electronic shop. It's usually done online. Vivo, for example, also went massy by sponsoring IPL, which OnePlus would never do. To attract college students, for example, Realme has been sponsoring college events. And they actually put Divine and they had something called Realme Sundowner, which is a ripoff of the Goa style party. If you paid close attention to our Colgate case study, you understand that brands who are trying to pitch you all-in-one products often fail and therefore are limited to pitching one main feature and one main marketing position per brand. With multiple brands, you can do all that. And that is why the Altia Birla Group and Madura Fashion in specific has a roster of brands. If they were all the same company, neither would the single feature pitch be possible, nor would marketing without diluting each other's positioning be possible. This is the same case with pantaloons. Even though the Altia Birla Group owns pantaloons, they get the same clothes there, manufactured in the same place at one-fifth the price of Van Heusen. So guys and girls listening to this, do not go by what the name of the brand is. Actually buy one, feel the quality, trial it, look at it from another person or another friend, ask them, can I just see it for once? See the quality, feel it, touch it, and then make that decision. Don't go by the name alone, unless you already recognize and know the name. That's it for me. 